Okay, so today I want to have a reality check on your expectations of becoming a data analyst versus what it's actually like being a data analyst. So today we're going to be talking about reasons why you should not become a data analyst. And before we get into things, I just want to say that I am not trying to discourage anyone from becoming a data analyst. I really think that it's a really good career path to go down. But like with anything in any career path, it's not for everyone. Like you could not pay me to do some other careers. So let's get into it. So the first reason that you should not become a data analyst is if you're not a self learner. In this role, you really have to learn a lot on your own. So if you're someone that may need a lot of hands on help in order to complete a task, this may not be the best fit for you. Things are constantly changing and there's a ton of things that you have to learn on your own. In my situation, I came into this role with no prior experience in data analytics. So I had no I had no training on SQL or how to use any of the data visualization tools like Tableau and Click and I know a lot of people use Power BI. I had no experience on using any of those tools. So for me, I had to do a lot of self-learning on my own. Yes, I did get to do some like side-by-sides and watch um, a peer that's on my team as well as watch my manager when he was doing some of his projects but that wasn't what I did all day every day in the beginning I had to go out and pretty much Google search a lot of different things I had to learn how to do SQL on my own I had to learn how to use Tableau pretty much on my own so there's a in not to say that's going to be the case for everyone you guys may be like taking courses or taking certifications. So you're learning in like kind of like a classroom setting, but that wasn't my experience. And even if you do learn those things in a classroom type experience, there's a lot you're going to have to learn on the job. Databases are going to be set up differently. The tools that your company or these companies have are going to be set up differently. So there's going to be a lot of on the job learning and you can't really rely on tapping your coworker on the, on, on the shoulder every time you need help with something. It's really something that you have to be an independent learner and you have to go out there and get the answers to the information. Your first thought should not be, let me ask my coworker the answer to this and see if they're gonna figure it out or see if they can help me out with this. Your first, first thought is really having to be, let me go and search and try to find the answer to this on my own because everybody's busy. In my role, for the most part, myself and my team, we're doing a lot of solo projects. So they are working on something completely different than what I'm working on. So everyone is busy and has their own thing going on. And when you're asking someone else for help with something, you're pretty much taking them away from the project and the work that they have to do that they have deadlines on. So you really have to have this mindset of self-learning if you want to get into the analytics. Okay, so I am editing this video and I just want to add, I'm not saying that you can never ask your coworker for help. I'm just saying that that typically should not be your first thought when you're needing help with something or trying to find the answer to something. Typically, you want to try and self-serve or find the answer on your own before you reach out to another. Now, if it's something like they got the data you need or, of course, reach out to them. Like, I hope that's kind of like common sense, common knowledge. But yeah, if they there's going to be cases or times where it's like this person, I know they have the information. I know I need to reach out to them. Definitely do that. But if it's like, oh, I'm trying to figure out how to make this join work, Google it. So the next thing is going to be if you're someone who gets easily frustrated or if you're impatient, this is a role you have to have a lot of patience with. Patience with yourself, patience with these databases, patience with the tools, because you're going to run into issues in this job role. You're going to have problems with coding, with debugging, with trying to find a freaking data source sometimes. Like everybody's trying to find out where the data is. There's like hundreds of tables and views that are out there. And that can be frustrating 
trying to locate data. It can be frustrating trying to debug your code, trying to figure out why things aren't right. It can also be frustrating working with others when you're waiting on them to provide you with information or you're waiting on a client to sign off on a project or you're dealing with a client that is constantly changing their mind on what they want and that can be frustrating having to deal with someone that doesn't know what they want and you're having to kind of insert into their project when they should be, when they should have that ready for you. But that's not how this works out all the time. So you may have to go through a lot of trial and error working throughout the project and your visualizations and working with stakeholders and clients. So. If you get easily frustrated or if you're impatient, this may not be the best fit for you. And tying into that, the next reason why you may not want to be a data analyst is that if you don't like to work with others. I know for me, when I first got into this role, I didn't think that I would, and this also ties into communication, you guys, but when I first got into this role, I thought, you know, like, I always see people on their computers typing with their headphones on. I didn't think that they interacted a lot with others, but you really do. The lines of communication have to be open all the time throughout a project. You talk to people more than you think you would, and maybe more than you'd like to. You have to work with others. You have to work with people on your team. You have to work with your stakeholders or clients. You have to update like we have like a 15 minute daily scrum so i'm working with our scrum masters we're giving project updates we're working through roadblocks we're meeting with clients on status updates on information we need things that are happening we're having to update our jira tickets on a daily basis which keeps the client or stakeholder updated on where we're at and then of course they're commenting back on those tickets for the most part to either give you information or confirming where you're at or possibly changing deadlines you're going to be working with a lot of people throughout your career as a data analyst so if you're if you're not a fan of talking to people, if you're not a fan of working with others, this just may not be the role for you. So the next reason why this may not be the best fit for you is that you think that you're going to get rich off becoming a data analyst. I feel like there's this common misconception that when you get into data analysts, like you take one of like the um, data analytics certifications, you are going to get into an entry level role making 100000 per year. Now, I have seen videos of people saying like they got their first data analyst role making 100K, but please understand that is the exception, that is not the rule. On average, data analyst roles are between 60 to 80K. Like just go out on Indeed, go on LinkedIn, look at some of these job postings. I've seen some in my area that are as low as 40K. And when you look at and read the job description, what they are really describing that they want is a data scientist, not a data analyst. So be mindful of that. Typically, you'll, you're gonna see like a senior data analyst or above making like 90K plus or even six figures on average. That's not typically the average of someone just getting into data analytics. So if you're doing it thinking, oh, I'm going to take this certification course and then I'm gonna start a job at 100K, please go look at job listings before you wait like it to me before you waste your money thinking that you're going to take this course and then just go into a 100k job because that's typically not the case average 60 to 80k range for a data analyst which is still great money and you can advance as you get into the role longer you can make more money and get into those higher ranges but typically starting I just want to say like that's not the norm that's the exception that's not the that's not the rule so i encourage you go out there look at the job listings see what data analysts or companies that you want to work for or just local to your area are making to see if that's something you want to pursue before you invest your time and your money into this i hope that this information was helpful to you if you're thinking about becoming a data analyst just some things to consider if you have some other points for anyone looking to get into this role please go ahead and drop a comment down below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.